On the Jacob Beer Show today, I'm so happy to have Alyssa Carson on. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Well, it's a pleasure. Um, you got a bright future ahead of you. Uh, before we get into questions, would you like to uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, pretty much for me, I've been interested in space for as long as I can ever remember. And so I've always been looking for any and everything to do with space, um, whether that was learning more about space, getting involved in the space industry in any way. I'm currently at Florida Tech studying astrobiology. Um, as well as doing anything else I can on the side to kind of get involved in the space industry. Um, I am a pilot, a scuba diver, skydiver, aquanaut. So I definitely have gone around a little bit in getting different certifications and learning a bit more. Awesome. And of course, it's important that we get a lot of young people interested in STEM as it's our future um, with a lot of things, not just space. Um, I guess what was... What, from a young age, made you interested in space? Was that zero G? Was that possibly one day of us all going to Mars as a species? What got you mainly interested in the space out of any science-related topic? Yeah, I mean, for me, definitely space was what, like, like interests me the most growing up. I mean, I don't really remember not being interested in space. I mean, looking back, like, the very little I remember, and, like, some of what my dad remembers, like our best guess is that like it was an episode of the Backyard Again, which was like the cartoon on Nickelodeon. They had like a mission to Mars episode. And like my dad just remember me like coming and asking questions about space, but you know, no one really had very elaborate answers, but I was just very curious. Um, so I kept, you know, wanting to get books about space, videos, posters, kind of anything like that. And then when I was seven, I went to space camp for the first time. And that like fully kind of just like sold everything about space to me. I was like, this is awesome. Like, I need to know more. And so from then on, I mean, it was always just kind of wanting to learn as much as I could about space. Which is really awesome. Um, of course, you have a goal to will be one of the first people to go to Mars. Um, hopefully we'll get there sooner than later. When do you think that we will likely get to Mars and achieve that? Um, of course, right now we're on the Artemis rollout. This summer they're supposed to if fueling goes well, send it around the moon and test. When do you see us going there? Yeah, I mean, I do think that there's a lot of interest and a lot of high hopes with uh, everything happening now. Obviously, with the Artemis program, kind of the main idea or main hopes is that we are you know, sending people back to the moon by the late 2020s and then onto Mars by the early 2030s. So I think those goals are achievable. Um, definitely, if we start the testings of uh, the SLS now, really see it start working. Also, you know, not only just the government industry, but you know, you have some companies like SpaceX that have expressed interest in some form of Mars mission. So I do think that with the amount of interest there is just throughout different companies that we will be able to see it happen by the early 2030s. Which I hope so as well. Um, it's a very interesting time in space right now. We have uh, last fall, we had Inspiration4, and we have Axiom now taking up people to space, as well as the Dear Moon Project, which is supposed to, I haven't heard too much about it lately, but in a year, they're supposed to take private civilians around the moon to orbit. Where do you see all this going with a private space infrastructure? Where do you see that headed to help humanity explore space, not just NASA astronauts? Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of benefits to private space. And I think the biggest benefit being that for the first time ever, we're really able to do more than one thing at a time. So with just NASA being like the main focus in the U.S. for the space industry, you know, we had the Apollo program and then we had to shut down Apollo to start up the shuttle program. You know, it was one thing at a time. We couldn't build the International Space Station and go to the moon at the same time. But with the way space is now and having the private industry, you know, we can go to suborbital space, we can send people to the National Space Station, we can have plans of going to the moon, going to Mars, going here, going there. So I think it's really cool that we're able to do so much at one time. And then also kind of the idea is that the private industry has definitely taken, I guess, kind of one route at the moment. I mean, there are some like SpaceX, the Dear Moon Project, like you mentioned there, but further out, a lot of the private industry is definitely very suborbital. So pretty much Virgin Galactic Blue Origin, they're like suborbital flights, which is still, you know, an important thing, whether that is, you know, bringing scientists to do experiments in suborbital space, civilians as well. Um, I think, you know, it's been really big. We've always emphasized that, you know, being able to go to space 
see the earth does have an impact on people. And so I think it's always been a goal to kind of have more people be able to experience what space is like. So I think it's all goals that has been, you know, a want for so long. And now we're starting to see all of it happen kind of at once. So I think all around, it's just gonna open up many opportunities um, for civilians, for scientists, for future space exploration. Absolutely. And another just few last questions I have is, do you think that, of course, and I just want to hear your feedback on this, um, there might be life on one of Jupiter's moons or Saturn's. Um, they're going to do some more exploring with that, of course. Do you think that by the end of this century, there'd be a chance that we could potentially launch humans? Of course, we can never walk on Jupiter as a gas planet, but their moons are terrestrial, kind of like Mars or Mercury. Do you think that there's a possibility that one day humans could walk on one of their moons? Yeah, you know, I definitely think that that is semi like a goal of the space industry. You know, I obviously at the moment for us, like in today, our big build up, our big goal is, you know, getting to Mars. That sounds absolutely amazing and super successful, but obviously we shouldn't stop there. You know, once we are able to send humans to Mars, that shouldn't be, you know, hoorah, we did it, but like what's next? You know, there's always more to explore um, uh, within our solar system and within space. So I definitely do have hopes that after Mars, you know, we're gonna have an interest of, like you said, going to a moon of Jupiter or, you know, whatever the next like big interest is. And it's true because there is so much about our own solar system that we still don't even know and understand. And so I think it's gonna be cool to kind of maybe not see it because it may be a little while till we get there, that that's the direction that the space industry is headed. Absolutely. And two last questions I have. Um, the first one is, is there, was there ever an astronaut or recurrent one right now that has inspired you in a way? Yeah, definitely. I mean, growing up when uh, when I was younger, I mean, astronauts were pretty much like superheroes to me. I mean, any any astronaut that I met was like an amazing experience to kind of like hear their story and hear how they got there and all that. Um, but one in particular, I mean, Sandra Magnus was really amazing. She was a female shuttle astronaut. I met her when I was around nine, and she pretty much just told me that she got interested in space when she was around nine years old. And so she really was just like showing me that you can decide what you want to do at a young age and then like work hard and achieve it. Um, so she was super amazing to get to talk to. Um, but obviously, there are so many inspirational people within the space industry, especially now. I feel like they're building, everyone's just doing so much impressive stuff that it's really cool to see. Um, and really proud to see so many uh, people actually getting to do what they've also dropped up. So um, I think it's just overall really exciting. Absolutely. And my last question that I have is, where do you see, um, of course, with Mars and everything, there's also, and I've heard this, and I haven't heard too much about it, but I've heard about it, that they have, there's two moons on Mars, and some people think that we should land there before we land on Mars. What are, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think we should go straight to Mars or land in one of their two moons before? Yeah, um, I think it's going to uh, be what we have the most interest in. Um, you know, obviously we've had rovers, satellites, all probes, all sorts of stuff like studying Mars. And so I think that's where the bulk of our interest is. I think, you know, one of the main objectives that we want to do with Mars is really one, just in general, learning more about the planet, uh, looking for signs of life. I mean, there's a few like main objectives that we have in the goal of sending people to Mars. And so I think Mars is going to draw the most interest. I mean, it almost, I don't know, it almost like feels a bit wrong to like travel so far and like make it all the way to Mars and then be like, oh, we're going to like the moon of Mars. Like after going through so much hard work to get there, it, it'd almost be a little funny to actually go to the moon first. I think that we have more of an interest with Mars itself. I don't know, it could be interesting. Um, but, you know, there's also been, you know, different plans of like the mission to Mars, you know, like stopping at the moon, like on the way, like even our moon. Um, there's been a whole bunch of different ideas. They're all really interesting. Um, personally, I think, you know, they always say like the most dangerous parts of space travel is like, launch and landing and so adding more of those seems maybe getting a bit more dangerous than it needs to be so i think it just kind of depends on what the systems are prepped for um i mean sls is going to obviously go to the moon first get used to that system but i think it will likely just apply straight to mars and my one last question I just kind of got to sneak in there's what advice would you have for the next generation of course we are the next generation but the generation after us 
what advice would you say for people who might want to get involved in the space industry, you know, types of degrees they should be looking at in college and things like that? What advice would you have? Yeah, definitely for getting involved in the space industry. It definitely is really important that you are going after something that like really interests you. Um, you know, I think a lot of kids definitely are interested, you know, astronaut sounds really cool when they're younger, but you really have to think of like astronaut as more of like a destination and being able to figure out what else you like. Okay, but like, what do you want to do in space? You know, is it engineering? Is it robotics? Is it science? Is it medicine? You know, go through those different options and see like, oh, what would it, what would be cool to do in space? Um, and then you can kind of work through that, trying to figure out, you know, what to actually study and what to go into. Um, definitely within the STEM space, all that. Don't be afraid to talk about your goals, what you're interested in doing. There are loads of connections within space and they kind of come from, any and everywhere. Um, there are always weird connections, so don't be afraid to vocalize what you're interested in doing. That can definitely make a huge difference. Um, and really don't be afraid to like, just throw something wild out there and really go for it. I think, you know, when I was younger saying I wanted to be an astronaut, go to Mars, all of those were like really big ideas that weren't possible at the time, but now they're starting to become more possible. And I think it's the same idea, you know, originally private space and, you know, civilians going to space, that idea wasn't possible. You know, there are so many new space companies that are like popping up faster than you can imagine them. So definitely don't be afraid to start thinking outside the box in terms of what kind of like space job seems exciting to you. Well, thank you so much for coming on the Jacob Buer Show today. I hope to see you on some future space missions. Um, and I appreciate you coming on the Jacob Buer Show. Yeah, thank you.